Welcome. 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 And thank you for tuning in to the Sunday services at Center for Spiritual Living, Denver. We are a loving and prospering community in the heart of Denver and online. We now conduct hybrid services at the historic Grant Avenue Community Center and Sacred Place, located at 216 South Grant Street, Denver, Colorado. All are welcomed here. A place, space, and face of love. We are a spiritual community practicing universal principles that enrich our lives. We are grateful that you have blessed us with your presence. While online, we'd love to know you're watching with us. Feel free to leave a comment and let everyone appreciate you. With everything going on, life can feel overwhelming. CSL Denver wants you to know we are here for you. Please know that our practitioners are available for personal prayer work. Our licensed spiritual practitioners' names and phone numbers are available on our website at csldenver.org. Or, if you have a prayer request, feel free to email it to info at csldenver.org. For your convenience, you'll find clickable links in the description of this broadcast. Rev Zia, along with all our guest speakers, practitioners, service coordinators, and musical inspirations, want you to know how truly grateful we are that you are with us today. Thank you for your continued support and participation in our services, workshops, and events, as well as providing financial contributions to our center. If you're interested in upcoming events and information, we send out weekly newsletters. Sign up by visiting www.csldenver.org. We deliver services in a hybrid format where we meet in person at 216 South Grant Street. We will also continue to live stream all services on Facebook and YouTube every Sunday. Find us on our respective channels as well as on New Thought Media Network. Again, Thank you for your precious attention. Now prepare for engaging enlightenment. There is a garden Where dreams come true A beautiful garden Where God's grace blooms There is a garden Where everything grows a beautiful garden Where love is sown And in this place Of light and love You can have anything That you're dreaming of there is a garden Where dreams come true A beautiful garden That garden is you
and in this place of light and love, you can have you can have anything that you're dreaming of. There is a God where dreams come. A beautiful garden. That garden is you. Such a beautiful garden. That garden is you. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Center for Spiritual Living, Denver. My name is Tim Hancock, and I'm a practitioner here at CSL Denver. And I invite you to join me for the invocation. Surely the presence of God is in this place. I can feel the mighty power and the grace. Surely that grace is a divine gift from the one spirit, the one divine presence that is in, through, and around each and every one of us. And we know that this presence is with us this very day in this very room, just as it is with everyone, wherever they are, whether they are worshiping in a mosque, a synagogue, a temple, out in nature, however they choose to worship. And as we move into today's service, we know that Reverend Elzea's words are divinely guided as well as my words, as well as all of the technical setup that goes through this, plus all of the physical setup for the room. And so as we move through this service, we know this service is blessed. I release these words to the universe knowing, knowing they are so. And so it is. If we were to summarize, just a handful of thoughts about grace. We could say that grace is God's divine love, freely given to all. God's eternal protection, freely given to all. God's ever-present blessings, freely given to all. God's complete givingness, freely bestowed upon all. God's gift of absolute flavor, favor and benefit freely given to all. These are the ways to define, to define God's grace, inadequate though they may be. And as you caught, I know the ending phrase to every one of those descriptions was freely given to all. Grace as divine favor Grace as the eternal loving kindness of God is working for and through us constantly. You do not have to earn grace. It is not something that is paid out only to the good or the deserving. Grace is not something to work for, to develop, to build up, to cultivate. It simply is. God's favor, givingness, love, blessings, and protection comes to us simply because we are. We have all probably heard or said the statement at one point or another, there but for the grace of God go I. What's going on when we say that? Usually we are feeling quite relieved that we are not in a situation similar to the person to whom we are referring. There's a gigantic and a wiping of the brow. There is also a gigantic error in that statement. That statement implies that somehow God's grace has been given and bestowed upon us, but when God was handing out grace, that person was at the refreshment stand. That's incorrect thinking if we believe that God's love and protection are freely bestowed upon all people. Yet we must receive it. We must accept it. We must open our hearts, our minds, our very lives for God's grace to have its way with us. 
Joe Goldsmith writes, grace can only be attained by a state of inner silence, a state of inner awareness and receptivity. And when we have that recognition, then the energy of grace will come over us like a soft blanket when we need comfort, filling us with the feeling that regardless of what roadblock surrounds us, whatever race consciousness says about the situation, all will be removed when the time is right. When such a moment occurs, ask yourself as you give thanks for what you are receiving, whether the power behind the coming together of the right people and the right circumstances at the right time isn't the presence of grace. In all likelihood, it is. And from our founder, Dr. Ernest Holmes, from the Science of Mind textbook, God loves us all alike and causes the rain to fall and the sun to shine alike upon all. In arms which we are all inclusive, divine love encompasses everything. And now our featured uh, musician, Amy Steinberg, with the song titled, One Step. Good morning, Center for Spiritual Living Denver. I'm Amy Steinberg, and I'm so thrilled to be your musician for the month of April. And I know that I met you before I was out there years ago. So I kind of thought I'd do an oldie but a goodie of mine. This is called One Step. I think it goes nicely with your theme of the day. One step. Religion is a box I do not fit in. I am metaphysical. I am transcendent. Change a situation by changing your mind. Raise the vibration by knowing you are divine. Make a mental path one step. Repeat. I surrender to the presence of God in me. Make a mental path one step. Repeat. I am practicing the presence of the goddess in me. Oh. You've got to know your truth, your potential possibility that is you. And you stand in opposition, you perpetuate the thing. What you resist persists, so let love be what you bring. Make a mental path, one step, repeat. I surrender to the presence of God in me. Make a mental path, one step, repeat. I'm practicing the presence of the whoa. Make a mental path, one step. Just do surrender to the presence of the God in you. Make a mental path of one step. Just do practicing the presence of the Goddess in you. Ooh. Follow your intuition and the passion that you got. Be pulled by your vision, don't get pushed by your thoughts. Everything experienced is energetic. So be aware of energy you give and you get it out of the routine. Slip into observer state. Change your mind by changing habits. Choose a different way. Say ah, yes to your highest and your best. Cause what you desire, you could straight up manifest. Yes. So make a mental path of one step, repeat. I surrender to the presence of God in me. Make a mental path of one step, repeat. Practicing the whoa, one step. Just do surrender to the presence of the God in you. One step. Do not be afraid. It all it takes. One step. One step. Love y'all. Good morning, good morning, and welcome to CSL Denver, a place, a space, and a face of love, a spiritual community teaching ancient wisdom and utilizing universal principles 
to empower our lives and the lives of others. So glad that you're here today. And I think Amy set a nice tone, that one step. That one step is what we need to step into this month's theme of divine grace. Divine grace. Now, divine grace is this, uh, is, is this outpouring of goodwill. It's this, is this favor of, of God that is allowing us to move forward with ease and grace to move forward with the understanding that it's not all up to us. Not all up to us. And so when we begin to understand divine grace, we're able to take today's theme, which is going with grace. We're able to take that grace with us no matter where we go, because it's already with us. It's within us. It is something that God gives freely. We don't have to earn it. There's nothing you can do to get it. It's already there. It's already yours. Now, one of the first things that has to happen to prevent or to help us understand this is that it's more than just a word or a concept. Most people talk about grace, oh, as, as, as Tim was saying in the reading. Oh, uh, there but the grace of God go I. Most of the time, it's a glib saying. It's, it's, a, it's a way of saying, I'm glad that happened to you and didn't happen to me, is what it really means. And that is not what grace is. Grace is an inner guidance, an inner knowing, a way of, of, of understanding that as life unfolds, it's something that we experience. It's something that we experience. And because we experience it, it makes it very difficult to explain it. I have yet to be able to explain an experience to anybody. I can describe it. I can, I can give you, a, a, I can help paint a picture of what it may have looked like or felt like. But when I have an experience, it is an internal combustion that happens within me. That happens within you. And that's how grace happens. That's how grace works. It's not, it's not something to be talked about or, or, or some word or some concept that, that, that we use to make ourselves feel better when life does not, as they say, give us lemonade. All right? You know, I like lemons just the way they are. I don't need to make them out of lemonade. Lemonade is good, but I like lemons too. And that's what we have to begin to understand, that we cannot pretend that the challenges and the ups and downs and the triumphs and, and, and troubles that we face in life is something that we have to get over, something that we have to forget. It is something that if we look deep enough, if we, if we, if we be still for just a moment, we'll realize that it's grace. How many times have you been in a situation and you have found yourself just in a pickle and you had no idea what you were going to do, so you had to do one thing, just go through it or deal with it. But then once you got on the other side of it and you got over the ego stuff and all of the, the blame stuff and all of that, there's this hint of a whisper that says, Grace was with you because that could have been exactly something totally foreign and extreme to what you just experienced. I know I found myself in situations and I'm like, Lord, how did I get here and what do I do to get out? What do I do to get out? And it definitely is not me because what I was doing is what got me in the mess. Right. So 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 I know it can't be something that I have to do. That's when we begin to understand what grace is. It's not something that we do. It's something that we have to be open to, to receive. To receive, because, you know, the, the, there's there's this thing. Grace is not luck. Let me say it that way. Grace is not luck. And and 
Because grace is not luck, people walk around talking about they have luck, but it's really grace. And if I can get that slide, grace is a little prayer you chant before it's not isn't a little prayer you chant before receiving the meal. It's a way to live. It's a way to live. It's not just it's not some placation of words. It's not some uh, you know uh, thing that you you put on your bumper sticker in your in your back of your car. But that's what we that's what we have become in this fast paced, high media tech world is that we want to encapsulate everything down to a short phrase or a bumper sticker or a T-shirt or a cup. But but you can't. Grace doesn't work like that. Grace does not work that way. And so if we're going to go with grace. It's a way of living. It's a way of knowing and understanding that. No matter what the situation is, no matter what the circumstance is, God is there. God is there. So how do we begin to live our lives in this kind of an atmosphere, if you will? How do we begin to, to live in a way that regardless of situation or circumstances, we know that all is well? And again, it's an individual thing. That, that, that's the first point that we want to make like extra, 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 extra exclamation points at the end. Because I can't experience grace for anyone else. And no one can experience for me because we are all different. We all have our own trials and tribulations that we have to uncover and go through and be blessed with. Because you see, sometimes we... we in, 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 a, in a spiritual tradition, especially now, I believe, it's often taught or often understood that everything, as the Bible says, is supposed to be milk and honey. That if, if I'm experiencing troubles, if I'm in a bad situation, then... I'm not honoring my spirituality or I'm not following the religious teachings or I'm not doing something right. But in actuality, just think about it. You're doing something right by having that experience. We, 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 we've come here to remember who we are. We are divine emanations of a most high God that is intelligent enough to create not just one world, but worlds, universes. And so if that intelligence can create worlds, there is no mistakes. There, I, I watched a, a, a program on PBS this week. And it was going through the evolution of human beings. And it talked about the formation of life and the creation of, of ancient life and the meteorites and asteroids that came and destroyed the dinosaurs and, and, and how we came about. And if you just think about that, this would be a good thing to take home this week and journal about. Think about what it took to create you, to create me. From a, from a place that was molten, get, we, we, you know, the earth is ever evolving. This weekend, or this week, there was an earthquake in New Jersey, four point something. And of course there was the one in Taiwan. That is the earth still alive. You can call it geological, you know, uh, 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 maneuverings or whatever, but it is the life giving source of this earth that is still evolving. That is a grace. That is a grace from God that, that, that we are able to look at this world that has been formed out of grace when there is immense danger in any moment. So 
we must begin to really understand what grace is and be guided by it. To do that, we shift perspectives. To do that, we, we, we understand this verse from Isaiah. Isaiah 40 says this, but they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like angels. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. That means that there's a power within us. There's a presence within us that allows us to go through and understand what grace is really is. To be able, as they say, to walk by faith and not by sight. That's understanding what grace is. And when we can allow ourselves to look through the eyes of love and not through the eyes of judgment, which is what, what sometimes prevents us from receiving that grace because we're looking in judgment. Are we, are we trying to turn the light on us as opposed to being open and, and, and free for all? See, because ego is a, is a tricky thing. It's a multifaceted thing. There's the ego of the uniqueness of who you are, of what God created you, that gives you personality, that gives you uh, 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 the, the skills and the talents that you have. But then there's the other side of the ego that wants all the attention. That if the attention ain't on you, you got to do something to get it. There's nothing graceful about that. There's nothing, there's nothing that's allowing you to really experience the power and presence of God if, if you're working from that space. So we have to begin on a daily basis, basis to forgive, to have empathy with ourselves, with others, because that opens the channel. That puts us in alignment with the grace of God. That puts us in alignment with the grace of God. And so when we can surrender the ego, we get this feeling or we get this understanding by this unknown author of this quote that I think really sums it up. Let grace be the mirror you use to see yourself and let love be the reflection you give to the world. Let grace be the mirror you see yourself and love be the reflection. Because we all have our challenges. We all have our idiosyncrasies that make us uh, less than grand, if you will. And I know our, our theme this year is grand rising. So sometimes I'm not grand, nor am I rising. <laughs> sometimes I'm just, I, you know, as my dad would say, sometimes I'm just a son of a gun. And I would tend to believe that everyone in here and everyone that might be listening online got a little son of a gun in them too. But if I go out and, and start engaging in the world from that perspective, from that reflection, I'm going to miss the grace because nobody's going to be around me. Nobody's going to want to deal with me. Nobody's going to want to have, have one kind word. So when I begin to reflect back in love, I can look with forgiveness of myself first. And then of others who I want to judge. Because God, it's, as, as Tim said, there's nothing you can do to get grace. It's, it's, it's like putting the ingredients of a cake in the oven. There's nothing you can do to make that cake bake. It's the oven. Let's look at the God as being the oven. God is the, is the energy, the force, the power that allows us to live by grace. And so I want to give you three tools to cultivate this grace, to, to be able to work and walk and live in a way that, that every moment is a grand splendor. Every moment, you feel the rapture almost. You, you feel the presence of God in everything. Now, the first thing we have to do, and, 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 and the interesting thing about this, is these, are, these themes 
are constant, no matter where you are. And this is one of the biggest. Cultivate awareness. Cultivate awareness. Awareness of what? Awareness of everything. Cultivate the awareness of the trees, of yourself, of the bird. Now, if you are in Colorado, I'm guaranteeing, I don't like to make guarantees, but I'm going to guarantee this right now. I guarantee you that that wind that was blowing last night at 30 to 40 and gusting up to sometimes they say 80 miles an hour, you was aware of that wind. You were, and, 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 and right behind that awareness was the idea that I hope my lights don't go out. I hope the tree don't fall. I, you know, I hope I can get back to sleep now that it didn't woke me up. There is an awareness just like that of what grace is, but we have to cultivate it. We have to, now there were some people that probably slept right through that. Didn't hear a thing. Don't you start talking about when they say what when. But when you are aware, when you are in tune, when you are awake, this thing begins to cultivate. And how do we do? We cultivate through the normal means, of course, prayer and meditation and contemplation. But sometimes it's reading a good book. Sometimes it's listening to a nice piece of music. And here's one. And sometimes it's fighting with your partner. Sometimes it's fighting with your partner. How many times have you been in an argument and you became aware of like, ooh, I'm off base right here. I don't step way out on the skinny limb. Awareness. That's what God is asking us to do, to be aware. I can't forgive anybody. I can't celebrate my joys if I'm not aware. So we have to begin to cultivate it. And we do that by being attuned to the subtle things in life. The, the big wins, those are easy to be aware of. I couldn't sleep all night. I got big trees. I'm thinking, man, they're going to fall on the house. So I was very aware of that. But what I took a moment to understand after I woke up in the middle of the night and couldn't go back to sleep was the subtle song that was being played as that wind blew. There was a song that was harmonious, and in my mind, it was saying, there's a little grace flowing around in the air. This tree ain't fell on your house, and there's nothing you can do about it. Awareness. How do we begin to cultivate an awareness that allows us to see every situation as good because it awakens us to something or it, or, or it moves us away from something? That's what we're looking to do in life, is to do that in our daily experience of living. Cultivate awareness. And, and, and we have this quote by Blaine Zane, I mean, Brian Zane, that says this. Grace is something that you, that isn't something that you earn, but something that you accept. Grace is something that you accept. I had to accept last night. There was nothing that I could do about that win, not except pray <laughs> and, and move away from the house where I think the tree might fall. <laughs> That's all I could do. I had to leave the rest of it to the divine intelligence of the universe. God willing, I woke up this morning and I'm okay. The trees didn't blow down and the house didn't go away. And, and you know, Annie M and Toto wasn't around when the Wizard of Oz took the house. That's what awareness is. That's what awareness is. And when we can live our everyday experience looking at those subtle, that subtle music that was playing and the, and the immense sound and, and, and anticipation of something that may not ever happen of a tree falling, now we begin to understand grace. Now we begin to understand that God is always there. The next thing that we have to do after we've understood this awareness, and those who heard that storm last night, 
self-included, you got to surrender. You have to surrender. And not only do you have to surrender, you have to embrace the surrender. You can't surrender halfway. If you've ever gone white water rafting and that river is moving, you have to surrender to the water, to the motion, to the, to the contour of the rocks and, and the waves. You have to not just surrender, you have to embrace it because if you don't, you're going to go out the boat. That's what life is like if you don't understand this grace. We have to surrender to it. We have to give up our selfish egos of wanting to be right, of thinking we know it all, and allow when we don't, because we do know some things. Now, let me, let me stop right there and say there's a lot that we know because we are representatives of the divine intelligence of the universe. And it says that we've been created in the image and likeness of God. So we know we have some stuff. But we we got to know when to say, OK, I don't know this. How many times have you been in a situation and someone's asking something and you know you couldn't? Well, you have no idea. But you say, oh, yeah, I understand. I know what you're talking about. You have no idea. That's what the difference is between surrendering and embracing it. If, if you were to embrace it, you would say, no, I'm not quite sure. Could you explain that just a little bit more? Could you could you give me an example so I can kind of try to embody what you're talking about? At that moment, we've embraced it. We're not trying to put a front to it. We're not trying to act uh, egotistical as if we know everything. We understand that through grace, we can understand it all. But we have to surrender and embrace it. Benet Brown says it like this. Grace means that all of your mistakes now serve a purpose instead of serving shame. All of it serves a person, a purpose and not a shame. So I don't need to be right all the time. I don't I don't need to stand out in the crowd all the time. Sometimes actually I don't even want to be in the crowd. Y'all have heard me say it once, you've heard me say it a thousand times. My favorite song is Kenny Rogers, The Gambler. You got to know when to hold them and you got to know when to fold them. You got to know when to walk away and you got to know when to run. You never count your winnings while you're sitting at the table. There'll be time enough for counting when the deal is done. You, you, you don't need to do all that. If, you, if you're engaged in the game of life, if you're playing the game of life, you look, I'll take count when the game is over. Right now, I'm trying to enjoy the game, to learn as much as I can. And the way to do that is to embrace this grace by surrender. When we do that, the game becomes fun. We give up control. We begin to trust in the wisdom and understanding of the divine. Now, last but not least, after we've cultivated some awareness and we've surrendered, understanding that, you know, there's some things that are way, way, way beyond our control. The next thing we have to do is practice gratitude. I was grateful that the tree didn't fall. Because now that would have brought on, it would have brought on some more grace. <laughs> but in that moment, it would have brought on a situation that mentally I would not have been ready for. And the way we have to surrender to the grace. We have to open our hearts to receive. That's what, that's what grace and gratitude mean. We have to open our hearts to receive. And if we are in judgment, if we are in trying to be in control all the time, it's hard to receive. It's hard to receive. If I got my hands closed because I think I got it all, I can't receive much. I have to surrender. I got to open my hands. I have to open my heart 
open my life to receive the blessings of friendship, of companionship, of a good job, of a nice walk in the park. Because see, this is real life. It's not real life, real spiritual practice is not about reading the books and being able to quote it all. Real life is about understanding how to be engaged, how to be aware, how to surrender, how to love, how to receive. That's true grace. That's true grace. And so we, we, we look forward to the day when we open our hearts and keep, keep ourselves in line. Walt Whitman said this. I love this. He says, keep your face always toward the sun and the shadow will always be behind you. That's grace. Keep your face always toward the sun. Now, now, little comic antidote. Don't do that this tomorrow when that eclipse comes. <laughs> I couldn't resist that. Unless you got some glasses. <laughs> but 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 in any other time, keep your face toward the sun so that the shadow will be behind you. You know it's there, but you're not worried about it. You're looking forward. I'm not trying to act like it or pretend that everything's okay. I'm focusing on where I want to go. I'm allowing the grace of God to guide me to where I want to be. That's what going with grace means. That's and 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 again, we have this wise unknown giving us this last quote that says, sometimes the strength within you is not a fiery flame that all can see. It is just a tiny spark that whispers softly to, a, to that says, you got this, keep going. That's grace. That's grace. It's just, sometimes it's not this grand expression. It's this little voice that says, you got it. Keep going. Because you are aware. You understand what it means to surrender. And you accept the gratitude that God gives us every day. And we acknowledge that by the abundance that we find in our lives. So I want to close with this. To truly embrace divine guidance, we must strive to live in harmony with his guiding principles and cultivate virtues of humility, compassion, and forgiveness. By aligning with divine grace, we become vessels of divine love and instruments of divine peace. So let us open our hearts to the infinite sea of divine grace that surrounds us, envelops us in its warm embrace. And as we walk this spiritual path, may we be guided in the light of divine grace, leading us ever closer to ultimate truth, the truth of our existence. And may we in turn become beacons of divine grace, illuminating the path for all beings to follow the way home to the divine source of all things. And so it is. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Mother, Father God, that total embrace of life, that total appearance of all there is that allows us to be nurtured, that allows us to recognize and realize the power, the presence of God that is within each and every one of us. Because I know that right here, right now, that those in this room, myself and anyone that may be looking or see this later, are awakening to a new way of life. They are awakening to, to this grand idea of the family of man. Well, we understand that grace is our birthright. And we are receiving it and open to it and loving it and sharing it in all aspects of our lives. 
And so as we begin to understand that more, as we begin to, to allow this to, to really be our guiding principles, we say yes to all things in life. We say yes to all situations because we know that the presence of God is at hand. And that we are the ones that we've been waiting for. Wake up, be aware, surrender to that essence. And we will be able to achieve things beyond our wildest dreams. And so it is in that understanding of achievement with the power and presence and the grace of God behind everything we do that I give thanks. I give thanks for all the opportunities to succeed, to fail, to, to try again, to move forward in life, to know that the grace of God is always with me, always with you, always with us. And it is in that truth, it is in that understanding and surrendering that I release these words into a law that is infallible, to a law that is already working on our behalf to awaken us to a greater way of living and a greater presence of who we are. And so with that, I release, I let go, and I know that it is so, and so it is, amen. And so it is, amen. And so, as always, there's a call to action before we do the offering. And so if we can get that call to, off, call to action, this week, actively nurture meaningful connections with others by active listening, empathy, and understanding. Go out, find someone that you, it doesn't matter, but it's, it's a little better if it's somebody you got a little something going on with. And begin to actively listen to understand what this grace means. And then practice some self-care and self-compassion. And ask yourself, what does, what does showing yourself gratitude look like? What does that look like in your life? And we have this affirmation to sink this in for the week. I embrace every moment with ease and grace, trusting in the divine flow and allowing it to guide me on my life. And so it is now that time of sacred giving. And so we want to thank everyone for being here. We are so excited and so glad that you are here. We're beginning to step into spring and, and abundance is flowing and we have so many things that we are planning and doing. We heard before about our, our soul, cinema for the soul that's coming up next month. But however you give and support this community, we thank you, whether it's with time, treasure or talent. And if you read across the bottom of the screen, there will see the many different ways you can donate by going to the website, hit the donate button, text to give, or you can send a check or money order to the P.O. box. But however you do, we appreciate it. And if it feels comfortable with you as we anchor our offering in our hearts and place your hand if it feels comfortable and repeat this affirmation, this precious gift is buried in form, circulating and blessing all that it touches. Freely I give and joyously I receive and so it is. Amen. And so it is. Amen. And so Tim is going to come and give us a few announcements. Thank you very much. Thank you, Reverend Alzia. Good, good, good. Okay, feel free to join us today after our service for our meditation and coffee social. Reverend Alzia will lead us into a mindful moment of meditation where we'll focus on the quieting of the mind and be fully present in the now without judgment. We're going to follow up with some socializing and discussion over a cup of coffee and, or tea and some snacks. And mark your calendars for Saturday evening, May 18th at 5.30 p.m. for um, Cinema of the Soul right here at the Grant uh, Avenue Community Center. And it's going to be a comedy drama movie called Hector and the Search for Happiness. I don't know where we are. That's better than me, huh? Hector is a quirky psychiatrist 
who's become increasingly tired of his humdrum life and he tells his girlfriend Clara that he needs to go on a journey to research happiness and the fun goes from there. And then after the movie, we'll have some discussion regarding our thoughts on the movie. La Farvings are gratefully accepted and there will be bottled water for, for sale. We have older signs of my magazines over on the table for those who would like one, they are uh, free, along with the other handouts that we have over there. And there's other things to tell what science of mine is if you're curious and haven't experienced it and what we do as a center. Also, there are current science of mine magazines for $4 over there um, in the little case. And if you'd like to hear some good news of the world, to affirm the good news, we have a link on our Facebook page called And Now the Good News. This program is put together by New Thought Media Network and airs on Fridays at 5 p.m. Or you can watch these anytime during the week. Just go to the Center for Spiritual Living Denver Facebook page, click on any post that says And Now the Good News. New Thought Media Network has over 40 hours of weekly broadcast programs. So we invite you to go to www.ntmedia.com or .org, excuse me, and check out what they have. There's something for everyone. And here at Center for Spiritual Living Denver, we're truly blessed for those who choose to support CSO Denver by showing up on Sunday or watching us online. We know that as we move through the rest of the year, that a divine beloved is guiding and loving each and every one of us. And we want to thank you for joining us. And again, remember, we are going to have a mindful meditation afterwards with coffee and discussion. So now let's close out with Karen Drucker singing, I am so grateful. Thank you. I just come up